Hi guys, Andy N, Spoken Label, back in the house on a Sunday evening. Yes, this is a kind of bonus edition today, because I'm up, people who know me by now, I'm absolutely swamped in a bit of podcasts, but this young lady got in touch with me earlier on this week, and I was fascinated by what, what she's wanted to talk to us about, so I've bought her straight on, we're going to do a shorter episode, I'm normal, and I've promised her already, she'll be back on in September, so watch out for the awesome season of Spoken Label. Now, Christina... For people who don't know you, first of all, would you like to introduce yourself to everybody? Tell her, obviously, who you are, where you come from originally, and what led you into your creativity? Hi, um, I'm Christina Allegretnam, and I'm a writer. At the moment, I'm a playwright working in the theatre, London Fringe Theatre. And, yeah, I've just been, I've been studying writing since my very first year at uni. Um, I went to the University of Westminster. I did English and creative writing. And I loved it so much, I then did a master's in creative writing. Oof, oof, <laughs> oof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, we were talking, people were wondering, oh, just off mic, and I'm going to put Amanda, my wife, in contact with you. And Amanda did um, master's, in, master's in creative writing. And I saw what that did to her, so I can imagine what it did to you as well. Yeah, and it was straight after I finished my BA as well, and at the same university, because I kind of thought... <sighs> Um, there's so much to, more to learn and I, if I was going to do it I, I wanted to do it straight away rather than wait and then go back into, into Ooh, yeah it. no it's I think sometimes it's best to strike when the iron's hot really isn't yeah, it so exactly. yeah no I get it completely now as I said before we're going to be doing a longer session with Christina into the awesome time but I've brought her on specialist today because you've got a play coming out shortly haven't you in June yeah. uh, as part of the fringe festivals so I want to talk to you about that now obviously tell us a bit about, about the origins of this play then so the origins of this play um, was based on an idea by our producer called Sharina, who's also mm. the founder of A Reason Productions, who is uh, they're the producers of this play. And uh, she got in touch with me as, as a writer um, through a mutual friend of ours. Um, and she had this idea because it, it was something that happened to her son when he was a kid. Um, mm. He was in the playground and um, they were just having, him and his friend were having a sort of, um, tussle it was a, a play fight basically and they then got immediately hauled in by the by a teacher and in the on the other side of the playground um, a group of two kids who were white were having the same tussle and they were completely ignored and um it was kind of an idea of well what what are people picking on um young men of color in particular young black teenage boys if they're roughhousing do they get picked on a lot because of the color of their skin? And that was kind of the commission. And we sort of, we spent a lot of time workshopping it. And then I wrote a play from it. Sort of right, play. right. Yeah. So how long did the play take you to write? Was it quite a drawn out process as play then? Because I know you've done, you've done other plays before, haven't you? So. Yeah, this was actually my first commission. Um, oh, oh. The plays were sort of um, my own idea, uh, apart mm. from my very first play, but even then I was allowed a lot of freedom, but I'll, I'll go into that later, later on. Mm. Um, whereas this one, I think Shireen was very clear on, on what she wanted um, it to be about two boys who were friends. And I, I love that idea because I loved sort of watching and reading things about that brotherhood relationship. So I was really looking forward to creating that. And then I had the idea to throw in a, a female character into the mix, sort of, because I know that in stuff like this, stories like this, the female character is like a grenade into like, you've got two male best friends and it's like, Psh. so um, the story is about their friendship. And then when they're having the play fight, she's caught in the middle trying to break it apart, but it looks like on the CCTV camera from the school, it looks like something else is going on. And Ooh. then they all get hauled into the headmistress's office and we, we, we spent ages workshopping it. And um, at first I kind of found it hard to, to write, I think, teenagers now, despite growing up in Croydon and South London, it's still a very, um, <laughs> I, we started this in 2019 and I was about like in my late twenties. <laughs> so it was sort of, is to get back into that world again. And so that was something the producer was like, they need to sound more like, um, South London teenagers. So I, I basically just marinated myself in the research. I listened to a lot of grime music and listened oh, to the podcast and um, watched stuff online about how teen how they would speak. And um, Sharina's son kindly sent me a, a glossary of, of a list of uh, South London slang. Like, oh, like, brilliant. That makes that easy straight away. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I stuck up on my wall and then 
I immediately, as soon as I got it, I was like, oh, I've got it. These characters are, because there was something about the first two drafts that just wasn't hitting. I created the mm. characters called TJ, Kai and Zara and their, their families, um, because originally the cast was much bigger and we had their parents and the headmistress and everything. Um, and then it just, just something just wasn't hitting. And I think when we had a, a read through, the, the actors were saying, um, yeah, it's just, they don't sound like how they would normally speak. And that was the biggest thing. But then after I kind of did all the research and literally put myself in that world, I kind of thought, oh yeah, okay, they're, they're here. And uh, I was able to banter and, and the kind of like <laughs> jokes they would have. Um, and then I realized that, uh, you know, it was actually like growing, like back in school, I, I knew people like that. And I kind of took that and um, put elements of some people I knew into these yeah, I think a lot of a lot of good writing. This does apply to plays itself, as I said. I've done acting, and I wrote all kinds of things. Like it's a good act. I mean, you need to put a bit of yourself in the play anyway, don't you? To see with that sort of personal edge, straight yeah. away with it. A lot of people said that when they saw the play, the character of Zara, that the female character, they said, "Oh, I just have feistiness and everything it reminds me of you." And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> whoops that's the word there isn't it so no and no, i get you completely with it so oh, excellent so tell us about the obviously the main characters in the play next so obviously there's about two in a minute so just so people can get an idea of the story then well so there's well there's three of them oh, three, 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 three. pj and kai were meant to be kind of the main thing and then when i put zara in there i re i really didn't want her to be like just that female person but when we were doing when we we're doing this in 2019 we had um, a staged reading with mm. actors and it was a much bigger cast and I think she kind of got lost in the, the situation um mm. and so when we when the we kind of re regrouped last year and um Sharina said we should probably make this a, a three-hander because of covid and everything we have to we have to strip it down I actually got quite excited by that because I thought well now's a chance for me to explore the three of them properly and, and, and bring Zara into the main focus. So, because I think with three handers, all they have is just each other and the audience and the whole, they're carrying the whole place. So the audience build is invested in this friendship and they're invested in this relationship between three of them. And the play is much stronger and richer. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. And it's like their characters that I created of their parents and everything, they still exist, but kind of in my, obviously in my mind and I kind of put them there in the background. But it's when you take it away, there's not it does not really that distraction, and you're focused on these three. So um, yeah, sorry. So <laughs> Kai. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's Kai Donovan. Um, he is yeah, he's 15 years old at the start of the play, and he's kind of under a lot of pressure from his parents because um, his parents are sort of they give him everything, but at the same time he questions kind of when things happen to him, like when he gets stopped and searched his dad, who's from a different generation of him, it's kind of like, you just kind of have to take it because this is just happens. But you know, you just, you work hard and you've done nothing wrong, then that's that's it. Um, and his mom's a lawyer who kind of is very sort of like representing um, people of color and who've done, you know, nothing wrong. Um, but sometimes Kai can't understand why he's, she's not on his side. And this, so that he's got a bit of a relationship with his parents there. Um, but they kind of look at it as seeing like, we've given you everything. <laughs> why are you being so ungrateful? And I think it's just that kind of, um, yeah, so he's quite depressed, but he hides it. Um, and then TJ King is his best friend, who um, is him and his mum. His mum's a nurse and works like night shifts. And so, that, so TJ kind of spends a lot of time with Kai and they've got this really strong brotherly bond. Um, and then there's Zara, who's sort of, who was friends with Kai first. And then TJ came, when they were children, he moved to the school and then they all had this really tight bond and, and Zara doesn't Brilliant. really look at them as being like any different race or or as even as guys I think she just kind of that it was really important to show them all as being friends so that when the play fight happens it, it really makes them question like that, that where they are in, into the gender and growing up and that kind of stuff because really no yeah definitely he's touching on I can see straight away from it he touched on the, the gulf between teenagehood to adulthood really so yeah yeah, excellent. Now, um, obviously, you said before, obviously, you, obviously, the play was a much bigger cast originally. When you stripped it down, how did did yeah. the characters change much? Uh, the three of them, or obviously, it let you give you more chance to explore them more, didn't it? Really straight away. Yeah, and also because I had their voices so clear in my head already, and so I knew how they'd be talking to their parents and then to each other. Um, it really it changed. I think Zara's more because she didn't really have much conversations with anyone apart from the headmistress. It was just 
that scene in the, in the office where she's like, nothing happened. Like they didn't touch me like that. And then Henry is kind of just like, are you sure? Are you sure? So then because we were stripping it back, I had to have her kind of as a monologue, getting really confused and talking like this. But um, TJ and Kai, they actually had conversations with their parents and their mum. So you got to see their sides of the story. Whereas with Zara, it kind of looked like, you know, in the original version, it kind of looked like she was just, she allowed herself to be manipulated and then kind of gets the blame for what happens. And that's not what I wanted at all. So I really wanted to show that she is is not and uh, not to blame. Um, but also it's unf sometimes it's really unfair that I think in, in society that girls are forced to grow up a lot quicker and they get they have to be res held responsible for a lot of things because TJ and Kai are like, you need to sort this, like you need to sort this. And it's like, why? Why is it her problem? <laughs> like Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. I agree with you completely. That's fascinating. So it's not like it's, like I said, and what I've read about was, you sent me some really detailed stuff with the play, and it does sound a fascinating play on that that way straight away. So tell us about the casting then, they said this play thing. So obviously it's coming out in um a festival down in London shortly. So it was the cast in already in place, was it pre-lockdown? Well, interesting you mentioned that because when we had the read the stage reading, we cast everybody. Oh, um, right, yeah. And they they were brilliant. But then when we wanted to to do this again, we went through the auditioning process and the recasting. But this time we had a, a new director on board called uh, Leon, who's fantastic. And he wasn't there for the um the reading. So when we did the auditions I actually didn't go to the audition so I didn't find out who was cast until afterwards Ooh, that's and interesting two of the actors who played um who was in like the main three were cast um and that was uh, Josh and Cece who played TJ and Zara in the previous one but now uh, Josh is playing Kai and um and a really talented young actor called Braulio is playing TJ who uh, this was actually his stage debut back in November when we debuted he's fantastic he just knocked it out of the park and they all they all did um and I thought you know Joshua because I saw him as TJ and he was fantastic as TJ but he also is really good as Kai so he could be either or and he brings like a new new kind of level to Kai and CC Zara I was just kind of like when I saw her in the in the reading we had like a read through and I saw it was hers cast Zara I was like oh my gosh because <laughs> she did such an amazing job at the stage reading but it's interesting that Leon kind of picked up on that I didn't had no idea who was cast in that but saw it when they re-auditioned I just thought that was very that was just really cool <laughs> oh brilliant no, no excellent good luck with it definitely now obviously um a bit let people obviously know when and where the play is on then haven't we i know it's on in june so what's yeah. um it's on a fringe festival so what fringe festival that is it on so it's part of the uh, peckham fringe festival and this is peckham's very first fringe festival so it's <laughs> really good yeah we're so proud proud to be on the bill um because it's just like we're making history just like 20 20 years from now <laughs> we'll see our play on oh, there yeah, completely yeah um so yeah it's, it's at theater peckham and it's on the 2nd and 3rd of June. So that's actually the Jubilee bank holiday. Oh, though. God, it is one, isn't it? Yeah. God, yeah. yeah. Oh, good luck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's in the evening, so I've got no one else, nothing else to do in the evening. And um, the 3rd of June is actually my birthday. So come along, to, come on. I remember everybody, come along, <laughs> support Christina. It's a birthday. Give it a birthday treat. <laughs> Um, so yeah, if you want to come and say I was at the very first Peckham Fringe Festival on the Jubilee weekend, Platinum Jubilee, it's like two things. That's, yeah, Brilliant. Really <laughs> now, obviously, what time does the play start then? 7.30 p.m. 7.30. And if you want to get tickets for it, where do they go to get tickets? Um, you can get it on the Theatre Peckham's website. That's where all the, the tickets are. It's, it's got a list of all the fringe festivals um, and we are play fight <laughs> at 7.30 p.m. Brilliant. Okay, now obviously, I, I always ask people as well, a couple of quick questions I've spoken to wrap up with. Obviously, what plans do you have next then? Is there a, a, another run for the play possibly in mind? Hopefully, yeah, hopefully. I think they were there were talks about hopefully you're taking this on tour, so maybe you might get a chance to see it. Well, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Okay. If you, if you, get, you get as far as Manchester, definitely I'll come see it, yeah, that's for sure. Remind <laughs> yeah. me, remind me, because I forget. <laughs> I will, I will. Um, and hopefully, yeah, hope, because we obviously want people to see this play. Um, but, but yeah, and I've got um, writing other stuff as well, which hopefully will get put on soon. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Now, obviously, if people to find more about you, Christina, then, where are the best going to wrap up with? Um, best best place to go is my website is chrissysnotebook.com. Um, and you can follow me on Instagram as well as at xchristina.writer and Twitter, which is at chrissyA underscore 92. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, good luck with the play, Christina. Like I said, when you're back on with us later in the year, I can ask you lots of in-depth questions about how the play went, what went wrong, <laughs> what were you doing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. 
but seriously, all the best with it. So keep in touch with that. Now, hang around, because I do need to quit audio off microphone anyway. But as Don Callis says at Impact Wrestling to wrap up with, stay safe and stay over, and we'll see you all next time.